It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam Lasant Show. Now here's your host, Sam Lasant. Hi folks, while we're continuing on with learning what's going on in the state as far as our taxes are concerned, the budget, uh, as you know, I had uh, Secretary of State, uh, Secretary of Revenue, I'm sorry, Dan User on the show, talking about the budget and what was going on. And uh, now we have Senator John Udichak, certainly no stranger to the show and no stranger to us here in northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, I asked John to come on to discuss a few things uh, because you heard what Dan Muser had to say about the budget. And um, here's a guy, John Udichak, spent 12 years in the House and now third year in the Senate. Uh, John, nice to have you again. Thank you very much, Sam. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're, we're interesting times, uh, you know, what's going on. And as I mentioned before, I think people sometimes become very frustrated, you know, with a lot of politicians. As, as a result, when you mention Congress in the United States, you know, their 9%, 10%, 12% approval rating. Uh, you mentioned politicians in the state of Pennsylvania, and it's the same, you know, I don't think it's as low as the national average or U.S. average, but the, the, the point is that there's a, there's a lot to be said uh, of what's going on. And uh, I don't know if there's, uh, there seems to be a lot of rhetoric, a lot of nonsense going on on both sides, and who tells the truth? One person said to me, there's always three sides, the your side, my side, and the true side. Well, let's talk about the budget, okay, because you have, you made some statements here about Corbett, uh, that, um, you know, I, I want to know what your feelings are, and then let me tell you what my feelings are. Sure. The, on, on the governor's on, proposed yeah, uh, governor's budget. budget. And uh, just, just to be clear, I mean, you, you, you referenced Dan Muser. Uh, Dan's a, a dear friend of mine. I've worked very well with him. I, th I think he's done a, a, a terrific job as Secretary of Revenue. He helped us with a, a small business loan program that we developed for Luzerne County, for all Luzerne County businesses. Uh, and, and, I, and, and with the governor and the governor's proposal, I always try to use the phrase the administration. Uh, it, it's never personal. I may disagree with the governor's ideas or, or their tactics, and, and that's, that's okay. Some people don't like that confrontational side of politics, that there is going to be a back and forth. That's necessary. I think what the frustration level with the public and with taxpayers is they really don't, whether it's Washington, particularly Washington these days, where there's the confrontational side but they still don't get anything done at the end of the day. It's all right to have the give and take on ideas and debate the important issues of the day, but at the end of that day, we need to come together, get to the table, and solve the problem. To give you an example in the, in, in the governor's budget where I differ with, with, with the administration, the proposal on, on, the, on the liquor privatization plan. The governor is tying liquor privatization to new dollars for education. And it's one-time dollars. One-time dollars, which I don't believe add up. He's suggesting it's a billion dollars. When you look at the actual plan, it doesn't add up. Uh, and I don't think it's a good idea, and I didn't think it was a good idea to use stimulus dollars, one-time money, to fund the educational system, as, as Governor Rendell did, because we knew that, that, that the school districts would build that into their structural budget and we would have problems down the road. The governor, in his first budget address, said we are done with one-time gimmicks in the budget. Here we have a one-time gimmick in the liquor privatization plan. The liquor privatization plan, right off the top, 3,000 jobs, the wine and spirits stores, they would be lost. Equally important, there's about 36,000 private sector jobs, mom and pop shops, the beer distributors, folks like Dave Chapulo, who's a previous president of the, uh, of the Malt Beverage Association. I stood with him discuss that this is going to hurt the small mom and pops. If you want to turn over the liquor business to the, to the big box retail chains, they're not going to add addition. They have their workforce. They're not going to need to add additional workforce. They would just add a few more items to the shelf. So I think the governor's proposal on liquor privatization has the potential to eliminate in a neighborhood of, of 30 to 35,000 jobs. I don't think our economy could afford it. Northeastern Pennsylvania, and I, and I noted it after the governor's speech. He mentioned every corner of the Commonwealth except for northeastern Pennsylvania. And I think he did it for a reason. The numbers are staggering. We, we have the highest unemployment rate for 36 straight months in northeastern Pennsylvania. We need to change that dynamic. You do not change that dynamic by putting another 30, 35,000 people on the unemployment line. Okay, now, let's go back a little bit here, okay? Because, you know, you know like I said, there's three sides of the story, okay? Um, and, and whether this, whether um, it, it was a Democrat or Republican, I don't, I don't, I don't want to turn this to that I'm 
anti whatever, okay? Because I feel the same way you feel. And I'm not privileged, privileged to what you guys are doing in t internal meetings. I just look at it from the end. He inherited a $4 billion deficit from Rendell. Uh, and whether it was Democrat or Republican, Democrat control. Both, all down the line, they gave us a $4 billion debt. That's, okay. that's, that's okay. not true. Okay. We, the, this, is what I, this is what they're saying. The, the governor was a Democrat. For just two short years of, of the eight years, the, potentially four of the eight, there was a Democrat House and a Republican Senate. The Senate's been Republican uh, since the early 90s. Uh, so but we had Rendell for eight years. For, we had Rendell for, for eight years. The majority of my time, the 15 years, uh, the majority of my time has been really under, under strict party rule of, of the Republican Party. You, the House was, was Republican? The, the House was Republican, the Senate was Republican, and the Governor was Republican. In the Ridge years, it was that way, and now no, in Rendell, the Rendell, though, how many years did he have uh, control? I think the, uh, it, we had an interesting period where we only had a Democratic Speaker in the House for two years out of... Uh, out of Rendell's eight, because we had a Republican speaker, even though we had a Democratic majority. Well, here, here's the point. Rendell leaves, whether he's Democrat, Republican, there's a, there's a $4 billion mm -hmm. debt, okay? Now, let's go back to the character of the person, okay, as I said this before. If someone asked me about Senator John Udichak, okay, whether, you know, you're a Democrat, Republican, I would say when Senator Udichak said he was going to do something when he was a representative, believe me when I tell you, he did it. Mm -hmm. Whether it, he was able to get it accomplished or not, but he lived up to his word of what he was going to say. He campaigned, he tried his best. If it passed, fine, he tried his best. And that's the reputation mm -hmm. you have gained. And I would say that, okay, right. whether you're a Democrat or Republican, because you've earned that. Corbett ran as Attorney General, and he said, I wanted to do certain things at the four years that he was in there. He accomplished that. The second term he ran for four years, he had another four or major things, and he accomplished that. Mm -hmm. When I interviewed him to become the governor, and he's not like my closest friend, he said, this is we have a serious problem in the state of Pennsylvania. This is what we need to do, okay? So now he's beginning to do what he's doing. Now what's happening, the way I see this, okay, and I'm hoping 100% wrong. I see a wounded animal here because the Penn State situation, I don't think this guy any way did anything wrong as, as when he was Attorney General because this guy's an honorable person when it came to prosecuting anybody. So he will have a wounded animal right now with Corbett because he's trying to do whatever he can. Maybe his communication skills are not the greatest. And now I see the Democrats lining up to do whatever they can to kill the guy. Okay, because they figured we got to get control back like we had before. Well, that concerns me. Straighten me out on that, John. Well, I, I, I don't believe that's the way to characterize. I mean, I'm, my disagreements with the governor are on policy issues. Uh, I think there are, are certain issues that we've agreed on. For, for example, uh, not many uh, Democrats uh, agreed with the governor on and giving additional powers to the Department of Welfare to go after a, a topic that we talk about all the time, about fraud and abuse and in, in, in our human service system. Uh, I sided with the governor uh, on that point. Uh, when they were uh, advancing, and Dan Muser was a big part of it, and we had an a, a in-depth conversation, because I wanted to see, because of the unemployment numbers in northeastern Pennsylvania, how tax credits for the, uh, uh, the petrochemical plant out in Beaver County, how they might be able to be applied to northeastern Pennsylvania so that we can help our economy. There weren't too many Democrats that were in favor of that, but I supported that. Where we differ, uh, and, and where I'll be vigorous in, in my opposition to the governor, is there's no question that they uh, cut uh, nearly a billion dollars out of education, whether it's K through 12 or higher education. I think that is a, a mistake. That hurts our economy. If we're going to compete with, with China and India and the investments that they're making in their educational infrastructure and in their traditional infrastructure and the roads and bridges and technology, they are investing uh, it, in, 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 in those traditional pillars of prosperity uh, uh, that, that I'm reading about now in, in a great book that that used to be us, uh, uh, Friedman, uh, uh, Thomas Friedman, who, who, who wrote the book with another gentleman, Mendelbaum, we need to invest in the pillars of prosperity if we're going to turn our country in this commonwealth around. What I've seen is the governor came in on a proposal, I will not raise taxes and, and, we, have to, and, and we have to cut spending. Well, I'll, I'll disagree on the, on the tax front for, for a point, and I, and I do want to go back to, you, you mentioned about a $4 billion deficit. 
let's be clear that they're they're massaging uh, the facts there. We are <laughs> we we are required by law to balance, to balance the budget yes, every okay. year. So so every year so when. When folks come in and say, you know what, I'm, I'm the governor and I balance the budget, but John, whether it was Rendell or whether it was Corbett, yeah. we are required by law to do this. It's uh, not like Washington, where they can just yeah, continue right. to run deficits. But, but my point is, okay, uh, again, you, you, know, you said now, the Hazleton School District, according to what I know today, they're getting more money than they <clears> ever got. Okay, in, 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 in the fund. Forgetting the stimulus, because I agree with, with the one time thing. You don't count mm -hmm. on that. That's a bonus, okay? Folks, I'm talking to Senator John Udichak. Uh, it's going to get better uh, because I personally think things are going on. I trust this man. I think he's an honest person, and that's why I think we can have a good, uh, good discussion. Uh, you know, this word communication, I don't understand why people cannot communicate, uh, particularly when you have, uh, you know, the Senate, the House, and the governor. Where's the communication, folks? Stay with us. Welcome back to the San Sancho, folks, and welcome to all my friends in the Wilkesbury Mountaintop, Kingston area, and of course in Pottsville. And uh, we're, I don't know whether this show will be shown in Harrisburg, but I appreciate Comcast Cable carrying us. Uh, we're close to over 300,000 viewers right now, folks, and I appreciate it. My guest, Senator John Udichak from the, uh, the 14th Senatorial District. John, getting back to at the end of the day, what you said, okay, why we get frustrated is, you know, we had, um, when Dan Muser was on the show, who I greatly respect, uh, uh, and he said the process of when they were going with the lottery. Nothing is being sold here. It was to be managed. And as a businessman that he is and everybody else, they had a number of lawyers, a number of people researching this and said this would bring a billion dollars into, the, um, the, the, into our state. We're not losing it. They're gu guaranteeing money, et cetera, et cetera, was, which would he said. So then Attorney Kane comes into the situation, okay, and I'm hoping she comes on the show. I'd really like to meet her and, and, and express her viewpoint, what direction is. But now what happens is she comes out and says, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Well, well I, asked attorney, I asked Dan, I said, well, Dan, was there any communication going on? I mean, like, why would the attorney general all of a sudden, you know, decide to, you know, put a sprag in something if she did not say, Governor, we have to talk about some things here? Because if you're looking at doing something good for the state of Pennsylvania, I have a problem here, and nothing was ever discussed. It was a slam bump, according to what uh, Dan Muser said on the show, okay? Now, I find that troubling because then I go and Google Attorney Kane and find out she was totally supported by all the unions, and every union person, you know, put the pressure on. And then I also read that it was hailed by the Democrats when Kane did this, okay? So then I begin to think, my red flags start popping up. Well, was this politically motivated, and why was in there communication? Well, uh, to the communication point first, uh, the Attorney General, opposite, regardless of whether it's a Democrat or Republican, anytime there is a contract uh, of that nature, like the contract, a private contract with the uh, uh, with the UK firm to, to run the lottery, that has to be reviewed by the Attorney General. When Governor Corbett was the Attorney General under Governor Rendell, he had to review those and sign off on those contracts. So it wasn't an issue where she inserted herself, she was fulfilling her duties as Attorney General. And, and, and I'm not an attorney and the lawyers will, 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 will figure uh, out whether or not uh, uh, she was right in her legal assertion in saying that it, it violated uh, it was an illegal contract because it ran afoul of the Gaming Act. When we passed gaming back in 2001, uh, we, there was specific language in the law to not allow, to prohibit uh, uh, online gaming from expanding in Pennsylvania. She, argue, uh, she argues that that ran afoul of that law. And I can appreciate that. Right. But my point is, and maybe, again... I, I don't believe she was making a policy decision. I okay. think she was very clear. Yeah. If she was making a policy decision, she was so, making a, so I, a legal decision on the contract. Okay, so I find something, and mm -hmm. that's my job, and I admire her doing that job. But now what I should do is, uh, Governor, you and I have to talk, okay? We have to talk about this because this is what we found here, okay? He, uh, according to what Muser said, many lawyers researched it, many things look at it. And I'm not saying right or wrong here. I'm just saying that I'm beginning to see, I'm beginning to see a lineup here where they are beginning to, to me, it's political. Well, and, and I hope, John, I, I would disagree. You know, and let, let's, first of all, I think there's a process. That is, 
it, she's an attorney general reviewing a contract and making a determination on the contract, and, and she took a period of time to do that. I don't believe uh, that it would be appropriate to have that conversation, whether it was a Democrat or Republican governor, over that contract. She has to look at the legality and then make her decision and then go forward. The policy side is the General Assembly, and this, this is a point you keep referring to communications, and you are absolutely correct. And what I wish the administration would do would communicate with the General Assembly more, not just Democrats, Republicans. There are a lot of Republicans that raise concerns about the lottery. Senator Thomason, who is a key figure in the passing of the Gaming Act, certainly questioned the legality of what that is an expansion of gaming and hurt our casino industry. Our casino industry created 18,000 jobs in Pennsylvania. Uh, so to, to the, the lottery contract and how it impacts those casinos needed to be looked at. You got to remember, the governor's decision on the lottery, he, he bypassed the General Assembly. That wasn't an act passed by the General Assembly. That didn't go through the legislative process. Democratic leaders, Republican leaders, all criticized the governor for bypassing the General Assembly in a meaningful way uh, in, in, in engaging on that lottery. The merits, we could discuss the merits of whether you yeah. should look at a private management. Uh, I've always certainly been open. I've supported the P3 legislation that you could create private-public partnerships in, 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 in the area of uh, infrastructure projects in, uh, in, in Pennsylvania. So I'm open to that. But the communication, and, and I don't think you can get a, a, any Republican, certainly any Republican leadership, that could sit in this chair and tell you that the communication between the governor's office and the General Assembly has been great. That needs to get better. They brought a new chief of staff in who uh, uh, I respect and a lot of people respect. They've done a better job. I, I have a, a personal relationship uh, with, with Secretary Muser, so that's a little different uh, communication level. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's been a challenge with some of the other members of the administration. John, I said at the beginning of the show, you're an honorable person, okay? And I don't mean to patronize you, but I do. And, and I always think people are, I deal with people who have substance. Um, we're not always right. You're not always right. And, and we try to, we're doing the best. My uh, wife and four uh, girls tell me all the time yeah, well, that so I'm not right. I understand right. that. But, you know, we're all trying to do the best. We see senior citizens hurting today, school districts, a lot of organizations, they're all hurting, okay? And then we see a lot of fraud. We see a lot of waste, and I think this even puts more pain on people when they see how the fraud and how the, uh, the access cards are being abused and, and, and all the mil tr millions of dollars, John, that are being wasted, as, Senator, or as Congressman Barletta said, in Washington alone, there's so much fraud, it's pathetic, okay? Right. Well, it's because people, maybe we don't have the John Udichaks, Agree to disagree with me, and right. we're still going to walk out and we're going to be the best of friends, but that's how you make things roll. If they're not communicating, then there's something wrong, John. Right, right. There's no question, and, you know, we talked about that, and that's where, you know, in, in, in a, I uh, don't do it much, but in terms of giving uh, the administration credit, where we work together on, on welfare fraud to go after some of the abuse, and you have to remember, abuse isn't always in the, in just an individual. Sometimes it's... Uh, uh, a, a corporation or a business that, that is, uh, that is uh, committing fraud. Uh, the, the Attorney General's office just settled with a, a large pharmaceutical firm. Uh, it's so getting at that fraud so that we can provide the services. We just had the aging secretary in before the Appropriations Committee, Secretary Duke, who I, who I like very much. 5,300 seniors in Pennsylvania are on a waiting list today, waiting for services. Can't, they qualify, but we don't uh, have the resources for them. Uh, but, you know, again, to that communication, there was a public meeting, the secretary was at it, another member of the General Assembly was at it, in the scare tactics on the seniors. The, the, the member of the General Assembly said, the lottery's going to go broke in three years. I asked that point blank of the secretary, Secretary Duke, and he assured me, the lottery's not going broke. Whether the, the, the private management deal is done or not, lottery's not going broke, we're sustainable. And music we're said having. the same thing. It, it, yeah. You know, we're, we're trying to find ways to improve it. And then, in, in, in uh, questioning Secretary Muser, I said, what, what are we doing? Let, ha, tell the General Assembly what tools you need, because there are some things that can be done w w without, uh, without uh, going to a privatization. You can go, for example, I'll give you an example. Right now, in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, big box retailers like Walmart do not allow the lottery to sell uh, any of their product in Walmart. Florida has just expanded and, and is in Walmart. That can add millions of dollars to our lottery system. We need to negotiate that deal. We need to get the big box retailers. 
They take, they use our PACE program in their, in their pharmacies. Uh, and so we need to have that kind of expansion to go in. And, and Keno, I think Keno could be a role uh, it, if it's done and doesn't run afoul of the Gaming Act. I want to ask you, when I go to break, I want to ask you a question. My question to you, Senator John Dujak, is this. How can we regain the trust from our, our people to trust people in legislature, in the legislation? How, what do we need to do so we can start gaining trust? Because we've been hearing about tax reform, property reform, God knows how many years, and guess what? We're still shelling out a lot of money. We've been hearing about gas prices. We had a guy like John Rich, who you right. and I yeah. met many times, who wanted to start a liquefaction plant back Great in idea. 2000. Right. We would have had probably 10, 15 of them today. We would have probably, our gas prices at least would have been about a buck 50, a buck 75. But they, we got, not the state, but the, the, the government, uh, the U.S. Uh, did it in. Folks, Senator John Udichak, come back. Interesting question. Maybe you'll come up with an answer that we could, uh, we could capitalize on. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam LaSan Show, folks, uh, folks SSPTV.com, and my email is sam at SSPTV.com. Senator John Udichak's my guest. I always like having him on the show. I hope he comes back. Listen, uh, we talked about what, what do we tell the viewers? How can we regain trust in saying we've heard for so many years we're going to help the seniors, we're going to reduce the taxes, we're going to do this for property taxes, the poor seniors are getting clobbered. When I say seniors, anybody who is, you know, uh, dependent on, or they worked all their lives, what's the answer, John? Well, first, there are some good things uh, that we get done as Democrats and Republicans. So I mentioned earlier the, 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 the natural gas boom in Pennsylvania and, and the potential for jobs in, in, in the northern tier and in, in, in the southwest. And uh, to give another compliment uh, to the governor, and it, but it was really a Democrat and Republican effort. You know, when you say we're creating jobs, oh, we hear you say that all the time. The, the refineries down in southeastern Pennsylvania, Sunoco shut down, leaving. Thousands of jobs, tens of thousands of jobs were lost. They worked with the private sector. Democrat and Republicans got in the room and said, not worried about elections, not worried about political rhetoric. How do we get the job done? That's how I think you restore trust. When you demonstrate to the public that you can get the job done, that you're not worried about the next election, you're worried about getting things done, that's when people uh, have their confidence restored in government. Well, and, and, and I said this before. Um, I know you, and I don't think you would do anything. I know you're a Democrat, as, and, and I know that, you know, you have a party as well as, and I'm a Democrat. Why, I have no idea. But the point is, you've always been um, nonpartisan. When you, when you work with Territorial and you work with Barletta, look what's accomplished by the fact that you all work together and agreed to disagree. And that's what Senator Muser said. I'm only hoping that, you know, uh, I'm not, I, I like Tom Corbett because I've met him a number of times. I think he's an honest person, and I really think he's, he means well to do. Maybe his communication skills suck. I have no idea. And maybe he should be spending more time with the General Assembly. I'm not the governor, okay? I know what I would do. I, I keep my people informed as much as possible. I would give you more information than what you want, okay, just so, you know, we can move ahead. I'm hoping that you guys could do this with the governor. I, I, I look forward to it. We're going to have a vigorous debate over the budget over the next several uh, several months. We need to get back, restore that confidence in government. And the way you do that is by making smart investments. The transportation program is going to be a good example of that, where I think you'll see a lot of bipartisan support. I was a little disappointed in the governor's initial proposal. Uh, Senator Rafferty, who's the Republican transportation chairman, who's a good friend of mine, who I have a lot of respect for. We've been talking over the last several weeks. He's also on the Appropriations Committee. I think a bipartisan uh, agreement could be fashion. That's important. I mean, investing in infrastructure. We have a couple road projects here in the greater Hazleton area that support the Humboldt Industrial Park. If we're going to create jobs, if we're really going to change uh, that, that unemployment number in northeastern Pennsylvania, we have to create jobs. You do that by investing in infrastructure. And Democrats don't have the answer alone. Republicans don't have the answer alone. We need to do it together as Pennsylvanians. Give me a minute on the pension. How, how, what are you going to do with pensions? The pension, uh, I have great concerns. As you know, I, I voted no on the pension back in 2001. I knew they were putting in benefits that were unsustainable. Uh, and, and worse yet, they didn't contribute. The problem with the pension fund is it's been underfunded. 
whether it's from the state or the school districts. The governor's proposal that's on the table now, and it may change, would continue underfunding the pension uh, for the sake of generating revenue for the general fund. I think that's a bad idea. We have to make the tough decisions. We have to fund uh, the pension. Can there be reforms made? Yes. Did we do a great deal in, in terms of a bipartisan fashion? Act 120, where we increased the retirement age, we reduced the benefits, we made significant changes. And the, the PSERS and the SERS board were before the Appropriations Committee. They said those changes back in 2010 that I supported, that those changes are helping make the fund stronger. But we still need to make sure that we fund it. I, I'm concerned that the governor is stepping away from those commitments in Act 120 that are going to fund the pension system, but I'm certainly open to a further debate on how we make sure that we honor the commitments we made to our retirees, uh, uh, but we also look at, at modernizing the pension system to reflect what is the current uh, standard of the day. Senator, it's always a pleasure Thank having you on the store. I mean, how are four girls doing? Terrific. Notice Thank I you. didn't say three. I said four this Thank time. You. You've yeah. done your research. I've I done my research. Okay, folks, Senator John Yudichak always uh, always uh, responds when we ask him what our news and plus the Sam Sancho, just to keep you informed. Sam at SSPTV.com. You can also Google Senator Yudichak, and he'll be more than happy to um, give you whatever information you need. We'll see you next time.